Just three months ago, MSI released The Claw, yet another handheld PC trying as hard as it can to compete with the Steam Deck. None of these manufacturers seem to get what makes the Steam Deck special. Instead, they try they try to compete with it by throwing raw numbers at the wall in hopes that they can get something to stick. This one, the Claw, is essentially a black version of the ROG Ally with an Intel chipset instead of the AMD Z1 Extreme, and it was found wanting. The battery life wasn't great, the frame rates weren't great, and for the most part, the list of things about it that were great were few and far between. Pushing aside the terrible marketing and the silly name that feels like it steps straight out of 1997, the MSI Claw has a Meteor Lake Intel Core Ultra 7 155H processor, a 53 watt hour battery, a 7 inch 500 nits 120 watt 1080p screen with up to 32 gigs of RAM. Like I said before, this is essentially an ROG Ally with an Intel chipset. Well, it seems like MSI isn't happy with the reception of the Claw, and they shouldn't be, because only three months after releasing the Claw, they've announced not one, but two Claw variants. One of them is this cool-looking Fallout-themed Claw, and the other one is a total redesign. Yes, in just three months, they've absolutely killed any chance the Claw could catch on. I guess they read the writing on the wall and people aren't happy with the claw, the performance, and especially the battery, so let's burn it all down and make a new one. MSI's latest handheld is called the Claw 8 AI Plus. Hey, good job MSI, you found an even lamer name than the first time around. It really seems like if you keep trying, you'll get there. For the bigger number better crowd, let me give you the stats. Claw 8 supports a Lunar Lake chip instead of a Meteor Lake chip, an 8-inch 1080p 120Hz VRR IPS screen, up to 32 gigs of LP DDR5X RAM with a maximum clock speed of 8500 MHz, and a battery to match, the latest big boy battery in the upcoming ROG Ally X at 80 watt hours. And finally, an extra Thunderbolt port for connecting an eGPU or whatever else you might wanna to connect to it. And just so that we are all on the same page, the closest competition to the Claw 8 AI Plus is the recently announced ROG Ally X, where the X stands for Don't Trust Our Warranty. It has a seven inch 1080p 120 hertz VRR screen, the same Z1 Extreme chipset as the original ROG Ally and the Lenovo Legion Go, but the X updates the RAM to 24 gigs of 7,500 megahertz RAM. In addition to Asus also doubled the storage, switched from 2230 drives to 2280 drives. Uh, this is more cost effective and those drives are also larger. They also redesigned the inside around that massive 80 watt hour battery, just like that's in the claw and they ditched their proprietary eGPU solution for Thunderbolt, which is awesome. So the biggest differentiator here is the APU, Intel versus AMD. Last time around, the Meteor Lake APU couldn't maintain decent frame rates at lower power, and it wasn't very efficient when compared to AMD's Z1 Extreme chip. But MSI switching to Lunar Lake, they're promising up to 14% faster CPU performance at similar clock speeds and 50% better graphics performance and 60% better battery life. On paper, the MSI Claw has faster RAM, more of it, a bigger screen, and if the claims that Intel is making are true, the Claw 8 could give the ROG Ally X a real run for its money. But then there's the Steam Deck. I'll be the first person to tell you that numbers don't always tell the whole story, and this could not be a better example. Are these new Windows handhelds going to be more powerful than the Van Gogh system on a chip in the Steam Deck? Sure. But you also have to remember, these are portable devices and you have to think about efficiency before you think about power, or at least you have to consider it when you're talking about power. Because if I can't walk away from an outlet with my handheld PC, then why have a handheld PC? What MSI and Asus seem to be doing is trying to brute force their chipset and operating system past the Steam Deck by just packing in a bigger battery into it. And honestly, I don't blame them. Valve has yet to make good on their promise of making SteamOS available to other handhelds, so Windows is the obvious choice for now. No one knows why only Valve has access to the Van Gogh chipset, but for now, it seems like other companies are stuck with Z1 Extreme or something from Intel. 
So if they can't get a handheld that's as efficient as the Steam Deck, let's just put a bigger gas tank in there. It's like, I can't find a car that gets 20 miles per gallon, so I'm going to drag behind me a giant tank of gasoline wherever I go until we can get something more efficient. But what's under the hood is far less important than the results that you get. If these handhelds can indeed run games better than the Steam Deck for longer than the Steam Deck, then that, I think that's a big win in my book. I'm gonna make a bet that I'll still prefer the Steam Deck for the console-like simplicity of it. I'll still prefer the Steam Deck because it's more ergonomic or because it has track pads, which can do crazy powerful stuff. Seriously, it, you can do insane stuff with the track pads. Link to a tutorial video down below that like button if you wanna know more. So yeah, I'll probably still prefer the deck. But as we keep getting more and more competition in the handheld space, as elbows start getting thrown around, Valve might feel the need to answer. Could you imagine a Steam Deck with an 80 watt hour battery in it? Good gravy, that would be insanity. But none of the stats matter for these new handhelds if MSI and Asus can't get customers to trust them because that's the ineffable thing about the deck. Users trust Valve. I've said many times that I don't trust any corporation, but I trust all the other corpos way less than I trust Valve. Valve has shown time and time again that they understand that by doing what's right for the consumer, you can make a shitload of money. And right now, both MSI and ASUS are having some serious trust issues because they're not doing what's best for the consumer. Let's start with ASUS. The Gamers Nexus Expose has shown us what's going on when you send in your ROG Ally for repair. It was a total disaster, and it wasn't the first PR disaster that ASUS has run into. A little more than a year ago, ASUS ran into a similar issue with Gamers Nexus and their motherboard policies. In response, this time ASUS has promised to do better. They extended the warranty of the ROG Ally X out to two years, which sounds great, but the length of the warranty was never, ever really the issue. It was how customers were allegedly being treated when they did send stuff in repair. I'm not gonna rehash the entire ordeal here. Go and watch the Gamers Nexus videos. They're fantastic. They're linked down below that like button. But because of these service issues, people have had a, you know, people that have had hands-on time with the ROG Ally X are having a hard time recommending it. And it's not because there's something wrong with the hardware. It's not that the hardware is bad, but because you may or may not need to get it repaired and the RMA process with ASUS is apparently kind of a nightmare, which sucks because both Linus Tech Tips and Dave2D have said that the Ally X is pretty great, but they can't recommend it. Then there's MSI's problem. They just, they just released the Claw three months ago. To announce the Claw 8 AI Plus now, after such a short time, is sure to piss people off that already spent money on the Claw. Now, some might say, well, the Claw A1M is a failure, so they're trying to correct, and I would have said that they're reacting to the ROG Ally X announcement, but I mean, they already have hardware. Look, hardware takes time to design. And for the Ally X to have hardware, oh, a hardware refresh in just one year is pretty impressive, especially since it looks like ASUS took into account the complaints that people had about the first Ally. Ergonomics, battery life, but that's a year. This is just three months, which means the MSI had to have been working on the Claw 8 AI Plus concurrently with the Claw A1M. They gotta figure out these names, people. Uh, that means that they knew the Meteor Lake ch chipsets were going to perform poorly and be inefficient, but they still said, nah, send it. And then people bought, they, people bought it, and now those people probably have buyer's remorse. I mean, why didn't they just wait until these new um, Lunar Lake chipsets were ready? All they did was alienate a bunch of customers and train us to feel like we can't buy this because you're gonna bring out the next one any minute. I feel like it's important for me to point out that whenever I talk about buyer's remorse, I will often say, when you bought it, you thought that the stats were worth what you paid. A new thing does not inherently make your old thing worthless. 
But that's like after a year or more. Three months is crazy. And speaking of crazy, I feel like you'd have to be crazy to buy this new Claw 8 because is the new Claw 9 AI Plus Lite going to get announced in three months? I think that's probably an accurate name to what they might call it. Speaking of the name, let's talk about the name again. Claw 8 AI Plus. The 8 is obviously pointing at the size of the screen, but then there's AI Plus, AI. Good Lord, I am sick of this term. This AI bullshit has just got to stop. Every single part of the industry right now is constantly talking about AI. If you don't believe me, just look at this fucking stupid email I received the other day. You read that right. An AI neck air conditioner. I felt dumber after having read that email, and now you're dumber after reading that email. By putting out this video, I have somehow led to a slight decline in the average IQ of thousands of people. Thanks for watching. I'm sure it's generating lots of buzz. AI has turned into a buzzword. It gets headlines, it generates clicks, and I find it to be more than a little insulting that they think that we can be fooled by this shit. But all that's beside the point, because again, what really matters is how well are these systems going to run your games and for how long will they run them? I feel like MSI and Asus looked at the Steam Deck and they said, they're playing baseball. Let's beat them at cricket. These companies aren't playing the same game, but if they can brute force their way into similar stats as the Steam Deck, I think that that's great news because more competition is always, always, always good for us. Just don't get your hopes up on the numbers alone. And speaking of hopes, I hope, I have hopes that you will watch this video right here. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. I hope you stay rad.